All right, guys, so this is the White Rogers Emerson Sure Switch. This is a multi volt contactor. So, we're going to go through this and we're going to install one in a system that I actually just repaired. And this install is part of a promotion we're doing with McCready HVAC and Refrigeration Services. We're putting in a few of these as a promotional thing just to get out into the neighborhood and, and show people what we're all about and to give back a little bit. So let's go through this. Now it's quite small, okay? It fits really in my hand here. Basically we can power it up the coil with 120, 240 or 24 volts as shown right there. So it's multi-use, which is really, really cool. Here is our line in and our loadout. And we remove the sticker, just make sure you keep it to make sure that you're wiring it correctly when you're putting it all together. So with any part, any piece of equipment, we're going to want to open the manual and we're going to want to give it a quick read because if we don't, we could mess something up. Our TFM, right guys, we need to make sure that we're reading the manual. Now, if you look at the map of the entire thing here, we can see that we've got, uh, we've got crankcase heater power right there. So if we look at the sure switch, there it is right there, crankcase heater power. And we can go on and look at some other stuff like capacitor, uh, hard start option, compressor fan, capacitor outputs. So we have some options here that we can use. And we've got some test buttons here. Those test buttons I'll talk to you about in a bit. And we got some short cycle protection and stuff like that that we can utilize. So one cool feature about this is it's got a test button. So when you push that test button down, what it'll do is it'll energize the fan and compressor without a call for Y1 for five seconds. At power up, so basically when you turn it on or if there's a power outage or if there's a brownout, there's gonna be a random startup delay of five to 90 seconds on top of the short cycle protection. So that's kind of a cool feature to give it added protection. And the fact that we are going to have brownout protection on this device is really cool as well. So the short cycle protection is three minutes. So anytime it shuts down, it will go into a three minute short cycle protection delay. So because this is an electronic contactor, it's got a built in algorithm that protects from brownouts and we can read about it in the manual right here. So with the random startup delay and the brownout protection, we have two dip switches right here. We can have those on or we can turn them off. And to turn them off, we just change the position of these dip switches to the left and it's simple as that. So we can check our compressor cycles as well with this and we use this button right here and the instructions are down here in the manual and it rounds it off to the nearest 100 cycles. So we can actually go in after a year, two years or so and see how many times our compressor has cycled. Pretty cool stuff with this. So we've got a little LED in here that's multicolored and right here, slow, solid, rapid. It gives us some instructions as to what they are and some color coded LEDs right here. So green, yellow, red would be test and green and red would be low line. So we're going to go ahead and put this into this existing unit and, and go through an installation. Now, before we tackle the wiring on this, we want to make sure that there is no power. So here is our line. Our line comes in at the bottom here on this particular contactor. So what we want to do is go across that and each leg to ground as well. So we know that there's no power present when we're working on the system. So I'll show you that real quick here. So there we are across zero volts. And then I make a habit of going to ground on each terminal just to make sure that we have nothing there as well. And we are now safe to work on this machinery. So the other thing we want to do here is make sure that the, the furnace is off or the air handler is off or whatever is providing the signal to the contactor to pull it in is off because right here is our coil. We do not want power to the coil because this will try to pull in and if there's power here, even though it's low voltage, we can get a bit of a shock or we can short that out causing a fuse to blow or a transformer to blow. So what I've done here is just removed the incoming power wires, the line, and off the coil as well. And just make sure that you remember where they go or mark them, which is even better, just so we can create some space to mount the sure switch in this spot. And then we can go wire for wire on the rest of them. And then that way we're sure that we're not messing up any of the wiring configurations. So in order to mount the sure switch, what we have to do is loosen these four screws here. It comes apart and we have the electronic piece right here, and then we have the sub base, which has four holes or four knockouts there, 
we can mount in any which way we need to in order to get this into the machine. So we are all mounted up here. Now, one thing that you have to be careful of, and that's the reason I got the lid off, is because if we have a coil back here, you gotta be careful not to screw into the coil. So that's why I took the lid off to make sure that I'm not screwing down into the coil when I'm fastening the sure switch sub base down. So let's go ahead and wire this thing. So we are 24 volt operation and you can see that there's a piece of rubber right on this one here because we're not going to use it. So we've utilized the 24 volt side of the sure switch. Now one thing you may encounter is a lack of wire slack. So what I had to do here was flip the whole thing around because I just didn't have the slack to get the, the wires from the load side onto these terminals here. So I did have some slack on the, the power coming in, the line in, and I had some slack on the control voltage here. So I just flipped the whole thing around. So we're all wired in and I would encourage you to use the diagram of the unit and the manual to make sure you've wired it all correctly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test all of this. And then when we're done testing, what we're gonna do is we're going to zip tie everything neat but I never zip tie until I test just in case I have to make modifications. So let's test first and then we'll zip tie. So we've powered up the module. We got a slow flash there signifying that it's on standby. So all good so far. So we are gonna go hit the test mode here. And you can see that LED has changed. We're in test mode, compressor and fan both started. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna shut the power off, zip tie these wires up and go start this cooling up. Okay, the sure switch, it's in, it's running, compressor fans going, wires nice and neat. So just a recap here, guys, this takes the place of a regular contactor and there's many features of it, right? We got the test mode, we can count our compressor cycles, we got delay and brownout protection, and it's got a five-year warranty on it, guys. This is the Emerson sure switch by White Rogers. So guys, check this out. Great product. Happy HVACing.